All right, if we're gonna do a Hockey Hall of Fame video, you gotta look the part. Don't you feel kinda underdressed? Do I feel underdressed? Look at you! You're wearing a Leafs jersey. Problem? Woo! Move me, my car! Are you just gonna get hammered? Get me a toaster! Magic Angel Robot from Winnipeg! What the hell are you talking about? This team is ruining my life! Drum roll, please. We now know the names of the 2014 Hockey Hall of Fame inductees. Dominic Hasek, Rob Blake, Mike Medano, Peter Forsberg, Pat Burns, finally, and Bill McCreary. Here are my thoughts for all of those, and I want to start a little controversy with Dominic Hasek. Because we're now at a point, and I'm now at an age, where I look at a guy getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. The last few years, you've seen a few, and I go, that guy is the best blank of my lifetime. One of the best forwards, one of the best defensemen, one of the best goalies, one of the best coaches, etc. But forget my lifetime. What about the best goalies of all time? Well, Terry Sawchuk's in there, obviously, for the classic fan. Many believe, and rightfully so, that Patrick Waugh is the best goalie of all time. Many of you believe that the best goalie of all time is still actively playing in the NHL right now, Martin Brodeur. Winning as goalie of all time, how do you not? Well, Patrick Waugh, Vezina Trophy for goalie of the year three times. How many Vezinas does Brodeur have? Four! Dominic Hasek, while playing in the same era as these two players, six! Between the years of 1994 and 2001, Dominic Hasek didn't win the Vesna twice! If you're looking for a neat little trivia answer, the two guys who won it other than Hasek during that time span, both with the Washington Capitals, Olaf Kolzig in 2000, and Jim the Net Detective Carey in 1996, aka The Mask. So the question, does Dominic Hasek deserve to be in the Hockey Hall of Fame? Absolutely, it's not even a question. But the question I want to ask you, is Dominic Hasek the best goalie of all time? I mean, Patrick Waugh, one of the best playoff performers of all time, three con smites. Martin Brodeur, how many wins, how many shutouts? But Dominic Hasek, the man they said had a slinky for his spine, was right there with him. And you can put it the amount of Stanley Cups, but guys, the cup isn't an individual trophy. When it comes to individual trophies, no one in this inductee class competes. He won back-to-back -back heart trophies. Goalies just don't do that. And for some of the older guys, maybe it's Gilbert Perot that personifies the Buffalo Sabres. Maybe it's La 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 Fontaine. But for guys my age, it's Dominic Hasek. Some of you whippersnappers are like Ryan Miller, but no, no, let me tell you. You see, there was this Czech guy, bit of a nut, but he was really good. So my question to you is Dominic Hasek the best goalie of all time? but I think we can all agree that yeah, he deserves to be in this class big time. Next, Rob Blake. As long as we're continuing my nostalgia train the same way that Hasek personified the Sabres, Rob Blake a perennial name when it came to Team Canada. In an era where Canada was spoiled rotten. Every year when you're debating who should be on the team, you got names like Al McInnes, Ray Bork, Scott Niedemeyer, Chris Pronger, and the list goes on and on, but Rob Blake was always on that list. 777 career points. Did I mention he's a defenseman? And for as good as he was offensively, that guy was intimidating. He basically trademarked a hit called the Flying Ass. You'd see him just lining guys up, lining guys up, the Blake booty, right in your face. I mean, not literally up in your face. I mean, that would be kind of a high hit, but up in your grill! The Rob Blake butt was to be feared. Not even butt all the time, just mmm, back like that, like a dump truck. Beep! Beep. One of the most devastating hitters of his generation, maybe of all time, and he knew what to do with the puck as well. Up next, Captain America, Mike Madano. 1,374 points. Part of that elite 500 goal club with 561 career goals. Anyone want to take a guess on how many 40 plus goal seasons he had? I'll give you a sec, give you a sec, you're running out of time. One! 50 goals in his first year as a Dallas Star, previously with the Minnesota North Stars, who obviously moved. And other than that 50 goal season, it's really hard to look at his career points and go, he had he had this one year and that was the year. He was the picture of consistency. And it's that consistency that has him as the highest scoring American player ever. Ever, ever, ever the highest scoring American born player ever. And what's even more amazing is he had a couple pretty devastating injuries. His numbers would have been even better. To me, the one shame about this guy, the one shame, and you all know it, he played that one season for the Red Wings. Red Wings fans, nothing against you. Absolutely nothing. But you know that was weird. Do you remember the first time you saw Mike Medano in a Red Wings uniform? Like Brick from Anchorman? You're not, Ron. <laughs> it looks weird. But the Dallas Stars and Mike Medano came to a nice little agreement at the end where he was able to retire as a Dallas Star the way it should have been. Not a single 100 plus point season, just one 40 plus goal point season. But the guy was the face of consistency and the face of the Dallas Stars organization 
for his entire career. Last but not least, for the players anyway, Peter Forsberg. One of the most dominant players of my lifetime anyway. Definitely one of the best players I've ever seen alive. You know, he'd rack up points, he'd do this, he'd do that, but the little things, you just see him destroy guys. The stuff you would see him do to players, I think had them in the locker room after the game going, I think I should reconsider this whole hockey thing. He was great at just that stop, turn around behind the net, and he could just truck guys. And he wasn't anything special or intimidating physically, about six foot tall, a little over 200 pounds, but strong like bull. And he's the guy who helped me learn that we actually butcher Swedish names probably worse than any other nationality. I thought it was like Russians. I mean, I assumed it was Russians. Until I was talking to the Swedish girl about hockey, and I'm like, oh yeah, like Peter Forsberg, he's one of the best players. And she was just like, yeah. And she didn't know who I meant. And after a minute of thinking, she went, oh, Forsberg? For what? Where's the why in that? Do Swedish people have like this special vision that helps them see whys that I don't? Why Ray vision? Nope, apparently we just suck at pronouncing Swedish names. And right now you're going Henrik Zetterberg? Yeah, yeah, that one too. But this guy was a playmaker. Seasons with 30 or more goals? Uh, two, and they were just 30. Not a single 40 goal season, the guy's in the Hall of Fame. But he was the Rookie of the Year in 1995, and he won the Hart Trophy and the Scoring Race in 2003. 800 185 points in just 708 games. We were robbed of Peter Forsberg. Injuries robbed Forsberg of a lot of his career. And you saw his career deteriorate. He went to the Flyers. He went to the Predators. He just wasn't the same guy. But even in 07-08 in one of his comebacks to the Colorado Avalanche in just nine games, he had 14 points. And his highest scoring year 1995-96 when he had 116 points and won the cup with the inaugural Colorado Avalanche. And when you thought tandems in the NHL at least through the late 90s Maybe the best in the league, certainly one of them, Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg. If there was a better one-two punch, there weren't many. Now, Pat Burns. He won a Stanley Cup with the New Jersey Devils. That's, that's a big accomplishment. Three Jack Adams trophies as the best coach. I mean, that's an accomplishment too. Holy smokes. But maybe the greatest testament to the kind of guy, the kind of coach that Pat Burns was, both Habs and Leafs fans love him. And you talk about guys who personify teams, Pat Burns, to me, is the early 90s. I would just sit there watching hockey, watching the Leafs play when they were when they were good. And Pat Burns was a big part of why the Leafs were good. And I'd see him, you know, the head shake, that little head shake to the ref. Or the much more boisterous just flipping out and throwing his gum. And when you're a little kid, who's bigger than your dad? Nobody's bigger than your dad, and nobody can beat up your dad. And I'd be watching hockey games with my dad, and he would look at Pat Burns freaking out and go, ha, that guy's nails. And I'd just be like, wow, if my dad, who can beat everybody up, thinks Pat Burns is tough, then oh my goodness. Nobody's tougher than... <gasps> Burns is a Power Ranger. Kids are stupid. 12 playoff appearances in 14 seasons. 15 playoff series victories. Also won a championship with the Hull Olympique of the QMJHL. There aren't too many coaches with the resume of Pat Burns. And the biggest shame with Pat Burns is that this induction didn't happen years ago. Pat Burns should be at this ceremony. I'm glad he's in. He should be in. But I do not like the way this went down. I know there's a process in this and that. But we knew Pat Burns was going to be inducted someday. So just induct him now. I know there's a process, but you forget the people element. Which, from what all his players seem to say about him, Pat Burns was pretty good with. At least now, finally, he's in his rightful spot in the Hockey Hall of Fame. Last, I should mention Bill McCreary. As long as we're talking about who personifies what, the refs, there were basically two refs when I was a kid. There was the ref with the hair, and that was Kerry Frazier. And there was the ref with the Woody Woodchuck mustache, and that was Bill McCreary. And he always had this look like, mm, I didn't want a penalty, shouldn't have done that. Congratulations to him too. So, what do you think of all the inductees? What do you think of some of the things I said about them? And who do you think should be in there instead? Eric Lindros, maybe? That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, click like. If you really liked it, click subscribe. Tell all your friends, and I will see you next time. up in your face. Blake booty. <laughs> Blake booty up in your face. The Blake booty right in your face.